Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to do my final review, my final verdict on the Zeiss Milvis 18 millimeter f2.8. This is a Distagon design like the two other lenses now in the Milvis lineup for wide angle, and that is the 15 millimeter Distagon, and then the 21 millimeter Distagon. And it slots right between them in terms of price and, of course, in terms of focal length. It's not an inexpensive lens. In the U.S. market, it has an MSRP of $2,199, which makes it pretty pricey. If you haven't already, I'd encourage you to take a look at this episode here where I broke down the overall build, the design, the specifications, and cover those things in detail in that. I will just sum that up to say that this is obviously a beautifully built lens. It's in fact one of the most beautiful lenses that I've ever seen. It has great um, weather sealing and it handles beautifully in the field. If you like using quality things, you're going to enjoy using the Milvis 18mm. It's just a beautifully crafted lens, period. Beyond that, in the field, it has a very nice moving uh, focus ring. You know, it's in that sense, it's very Zeiss and very Milvis. It's perfectly damped and it glides along beautifully. You'll find that um, learning to use hyper focus distance um, is going to help you a lot if you're not accustomed to um, focusing because I do find that with a wider angle, trying to achieve visual focus, even with a body setup like mine with an EGS focus screen, it takes a little bit more practice. And so if you'll learn to use the hyper focusing uh, markers, it makes it easy. You just keep everything in focus until those certain situations where you want to get really close to something, for example. This lens will focus focus down to a, a close 10 inches and has a decent reproduction value to it. Um, beyond that, however, we're going to break down the overall uh, image quality and performance in the field. Um, one thing that I really liked using about it is the fact that it has a very common 77 millimeter front filter thread. That's certainly smaller than its, its two brothers, siblings in the Milvis lineup, and it means the filters are more accessible. I used uh, a Haida Pro um, ND1000 filter that I paid, I think, no more than $70 for, and I was able to get gorgeous long exposure images. I'll throw a couple of them up here for you to see. And, and so that certainly is much more convenient than the Tamron 15 to 30 that I'm using right now that has a curved front element and thus you can't use traditional filters. And so my filter system is big and it's bulky and it's, it's expensive. And so that's certainly a plus and something to consider if you're looking at a lens like this. Beyond that, it checks a lot of the right boxes. It has basically no chromatic aberrations that I've been able to see in the field. It handles that very, very well. Um, it's very flare resistant and, and holds contrast very well and has just the barest minimum of ghosting and actually I would say does better than the exceptional Distagon 15 millimeter in that regard and certainly better than what my Tamron does because that bulbous front element does tend to catch the light a little bit um, with the Tamron. And so it's great in, in that regard. The distortion is very low, which is certainly a plus for this. I find that it doesn't really need much correction. And uh, you know, one thing that's important to me that if you're gonna use it like for shooting groups or shooting in a, a bridal situation, I noticed that um, when I shot in a staircase that um, there wasn't a lot of distortion there. The line stayed nice and straight. And so um, that's, it's good in that regard as well. The one area that it doesn't excel is when it comes to vignette, and, and that also makes it somewhat similar to the 15 millimeter Distagon. It vignettes fairly heavily, and while that's not necessarily a big deal in most situations, if you're shooting stills, it can be more of a deal if you are uh, shooting video with the lens, and of course Zeiss lenses are often very desirable for video shooters, and so that's something to watch out for. Another plus is it is a great astrophotography lens. Um, it does a great job at night and star points are rendered nice and sharp. And if you look along the edges, coma is well controlled. There's no UFOs or flying ducks there, but rather star points stay pretty natural. Maybe just a little bit of stretching in the corner, but it's a great performance and actually it holds up very well when compared to the Distag Distagon 15 millimeter or the Tamron that I'm shooting with that I think is really good in that regard. So it's a great performer there. 
We're going to take a few minutes and break down the image quality and in particular compare how the resolution compares to options like the Tamron that I've been alluding to. I'll put that at 18 millimeters, also f2.8 and then similar apertures. And we'll mount it on a tripod with the 5D Mark IV body and see how they compare uh, side by side. And just for the fun of it, I'm going to throw in a much less expensive lens, the Rokinon 12 millimeter f2, which is for mirrorless, so I'll shoot it on an EOS. M3 body, but because it's on APS-C um, with the crop factor, it's pretty similar to the focal length of the uh, Milvis 18mm. So let's jump in and let's take a look at how they compare. Okay, first we'll uh, just take a quick look at some coma performance. I've got uh, an image I shot a almost two years ago on the Distagon 15 millimeters over here at the corner, and then one I shot more recently with the Milvis 18 millimeter. And so as you can see, and obviously there, there are two different kinds of images in some ways, but we're mostly looking for this kind of thing. And so you can see just a little hint of, you know, kind of the odd shape in the extreme corner here um, on the Milvis 18 uh, millimeter. But at the same time, the overall uh, stars are, are nice and crisp and the image is smooth. And so there's not a lot of stretching here in the corners. And, you know, it's about the same as the Distion 15 millimeter as far as the actual coma shape in some situations. And the Distion 15 millimeter is known to be one of the best um, lenses for shooting astro. And so, I mean, that's a, a strong performer there. I also wanted to give you a quick comparison to the uh, Tamron 15 millimeter. And I'll use a, um, well, we'll use the same kind of image here for a second and then maybe a second one also. And so um, here both of these are same kind of thing. This is 20 millimeters f2.8 and so if we look towards the center of the frame we see a pretty similar looking result and if we look out towards the corners we see also a pretty similar looking result. This is the Tamron and so you can see you know some of the, the little bits of coma taking shape there. Same kind of thing here. Um, it's really a, a pretty similar um, result, which is great for the Milvis because I've done a shootout with the Tamron and it was the lens that I thought was one of the best for um, shooting the night sky. And so this is actually a very good performance uh, from this. And then just to compare another more recent image from the um, Milvis that I just took here, and so we'll just again look at the stars, you know, again a similar performance. Okay, so here as promised we're going to compare side by side the Zeiss, which is on the right, and the Rokinon, which is on the left. And so if we start out here on the edge, we're going to see the only advantage really that the Zeiss has is there's, you know, quite obviously some color fringing here, both purple and green fringing that just isn't there. Chromatic aberrations are pretty much perfect on the Zeiss lens. And, uh, but as we look here and go on into the image, we can tell that despite the fact that the Zeiss is working with a superior sensor, the 5D Mark IV, there's just, you know, overall more sharpness and contrast, or certainly no more um, sharpness and contrast for the Zeiss than there is for the Rokinon. And, um, you know, if we just look here, there's just a nice amount of contrast and detail here. And I just think more so maybe than what's showing up there on the Zeiss. And if we look down towards this corner here and in these grasses, um, we can see that, you know, once again, there's really not any more resolution there for the Zeiss. And so we'll uh, take another quick look at f5.6 and see if that has uh, cleared up. So again, we have uh, Rokinon on the left, we have Zeiss on the right. And so if we look on this side, we see that, um, number one, the chromatic aberration still haven't really cleared up on the Rokinon, and so that's certainly an advantage for Zeiss. But at the same time, our results are pretty much the same. I would say that they're pretty close to being similar in terms of overall sharpness here, but neither are you seeing a you know clear advantage for the Zeiss either. And if we look up into this kind of corner in the foreground, I would say that the Rokinon is delivering the stronger image. 
So now we're going to compare the Tamron with the Zeiss. This is both shot at 18 millimeters f2.8. So Zeiss on the right, Tamron on the left. And so number one, you can see that the Tamron um, has far less vignette here than what the Zeiss does. So that's one advantage for the Tamron. Now if we look towards the center of the image, and I live view focused on this rock right here to give us a kind of a middle distance that should allow for a lot of everything else to be in focus. We can find that um, while the look is not similar, there appears to me to be a bit more contrast on the Tamron and um, a little bit more definition in the tree. These are both shot on the 5D Mark IV. And, uh, and so once again, as we kind of pan this way, the image looks pretty similar. Um, however, on these rocks, there's probably just a hint more resolution for the Tamron. They're pretty close. I mean, we'll call them uh, equal if we look at these chairs that are hidden up in here. They're also looking pretty much similar. As we move towards the edge of the frame, though, I look at this sign and I definitely see an advantage for the Tamron. It's just a little bit sharper. And um, here in these rocks, and of course we're getting close to a depth of field issue here, but um, the vignette's kind of hurting the Zeiss image, but overall here the, uh, the Tamron um, looks just a, a hint better. So here we're stopped down to f5.6, and here something interesting begins to emerge. Um, number one, we see that while they're both the, the same basic, basic exposure, the 1 400th of a second f5.6, ISO 100, exact same body, they're shot within just a few minutes of each other, you see that the exposure value is radically different in that the Zeiss looks overexposed, but in reality it's needing far less light than the Tamron. And so the light transmission is clearly favors the Zeiss lens here. And, uh, and so here, if we actually look, it's, it's kind of hard to compare with that much exposure on there. So what I'm going to do is I have actually um, tried to equalize exposure. And by the way, I needed about a stop and a half to get the histograms uh, relatively close um, on each one. And so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to jump in here and take a look now that they're a little bit more balanced. And so here in the middle, um, you know, there's still actually a little bit more exposure for the Zeiss than there is for the Tamron, even after all of that. I'm not really necessarily seeing an advantage for either lens. If we look at these chairs, they're both nicely rendered. I would say that there's perhaps a, a hint more definition in the leaves over here. If we pull over this way, it definitely looks like the Tamron is sharper in this little area of rock here. And, and here on this rock too. So I would say, and definitely on the sign, I mean, it's a clear advantage and clear advantage here um, along this fence that there's just more definition there and in these rocks over here. So I would say that um, certainly the, the center sharpness may be about equal, but the edge sharpness, that definitely goes to the Tamron. And finally, I'm not really going to compare these two images, but more just to show again that, that ex exposure difference. This is the exact same exposure shot four minutes apart, but look how much more light um, the Zeiss is sucking in. And so um, if that's something that's important to you, that certainly is a factor that the Zeiss needs far less light than what the Tamron does to um, to to produce the, the image. And so um, that's something to uh, take under consideration as a part of this. Here, just wanted to quickly show you that with a, um, a very inexpensive uh, Hida filter, um, I was able to throw on their long exposure. And so then with just a little bit of post-processing, I was able to produce a really dynamic uh, image there. And similarly here, um, this is uh, just a 10 second exposure, middle of the day. Um, but, you know, with some processing, able to produce a really cool result and then to crop in that a bit and, um, you know, change the look up to, you know, emphasize the movement of the water along the rocks. So that's one advantage of that little 77 millimeter front filter thread. This is straight out of camera here. Just shows the uh, lens is very dynamic. Here's a lot of light coming towards the sensor, all of these cars passing by, but you'll notice the... Uh, it's, it's held up very, very well against that flare. Similarly here, and a lot of movement in the sky, another long exposure shot here, but um, a great result there. Finally, just, you know, uh, this is an F4 shot, you know, kind of a more traditional look. And if you look up at here, there's just great definition, but look in the transition. 
from the leaves moving up to the sky or from the branches, no chromatic aberration at all. That's a flawless performance right there. So as you can see, while the Milvis produces beautiful images, it doesn't necessarily blow away either the Tamron or the Rokinon optically. And in fact, in some ways, I think it gives up some to them, particularly in the corners. I think what you're seeing is the result of what I call a law of diminishing returns. That in recent years, lenses have gotten so much better across the field. It used to be that fir first party were up here and third party were way down here. It used to be that, um, you know, that expensive lenses were way up here and inexpensive lenses were way down here. But we've seen a leveling of the playing field due to advances that are trickling down to other manufacturers and to less expensive lenses. And so until there's another huge optical breakthrough, I think that you're going to see a lot of parity. And in fact, that's what I've been seeing in recent years that particularly in the last two years that there have been so many good lenses released, often at the same um, focal length that really you have to kind of turn to other measures to make your buying decision. And, and I think that that's going to be true with the Milvis 18 millimeter. Is it a great lens? It absolutely is. And I've been really thrilled with the images I've been able to produce with it. At the same time, when you measure it head to head with less expensive options, it isn't necessarily a sharper lens compared to them. And, and so that's just something to take into consideration. If you're looking for a Zeiss lens and looking for this focal length, it's a great option. And if you're looking for a great landscape lens, it is a great option. But at the same time, know that spending the more money to get this lens isn't necessarily going to get you a more highly performing lens than some of the less expensive alternatives. And I have to confess that that cools my enthusiasm somewhat for it. It's a great lens. I love using it. It's beautiful to look at and it's beautiful to use and it creates great images. But at the same time, I wouldn't necessarily call it exceptional in the sense of being better than other similar lenses. I'm Dustin Abbott. If you look down below, you will find a linkage to follow me on social media. You can also find a link to my full written review that has a lot more image samples, also a link to an image gallery, and also a place to go and do some shopping if you want to take a further look. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.